Okay, I've got the motors mounted, but before we go any further, I want to give you guys some soldering tips and advice. Uh, and before we talk about that, just two things that I forgot to mention in the last video. Uh, I mentioned putting blue Loctite on your motor bolts so uh, you don't lose the bolts from the vibrations of the multirotor. But also, if your motors use the screws to hold the bell on, remove those screws and put blue Loctite on that screw because I've had a lot of times where these screws come really loose from the factory and I end up losing them. So definitely blue Loctite those screws as well. If your motors have the C-clips or the E-clips, you have nothing to worry about because they're secure. You don't need to put blue Loctite on anything like that. And I also put blue Loctite on all my bolts on the bottom of the multirator, except for where you use the uh, nylon locking nuts. I don't blue Loctite that, but bolts like this, I do. Because, once again, the vibrations will wiggle them loose and you will lose them. Okay, now for the soldering tips. As far as the solder, I use what's called SN63. It is 63% tin, 37% lead. And you can find this stuff anywhere. Almost every website has it. Whenever I solder, I use a little station like this. You do not have to use a station like this. But the one thing I do recommend is uh, to clean your soldering iron. I use this wet sponge. And it doesn't have to be a sponge. You can use a paper towel or anything like that. But the water cleans the soldering iron extremely well. Not only that, but it's the... I guess you could say it's the best way to clean and it will prolong the life of your tip on the soldering iron. After I finish soldering something and I put this back in, I don't clean it because the extra solder on the tip uh, will keep the tip from oxidizing as fast. So I just put it back in and then before I do my next solder, I take it out and then I clean it. As far as temperature, I use 400 degrees Celsius for everything. That is everything but the main battery lead whenever you solder that to the PDB. Uh, in that case, I'll crank it up to 450 degrees, but for everything else, I use 400. You can purchase different tips for your soldering iron. Uh, they have you know, thicker tips and flatter tips and all kinds of tips. Uh, I only use one tip for everything, and this is a, I don't know the name of the tip, it's something seven, but uh, I mean, it's a fine tip. I use a fine tip for soldering like the pins on my fly controllers or, you know, wires to the pins. And then if I go to solder the main battery lead or uh, ESC wires, anything like that, I just use the flat side of it instead of switching to a flat tip. So that just saves me time. Another tool I highly recommend is this. It's called a helping hand. It's very cheap and it is a lifesaver. Before I solder anything together, I tin both sides. And what that means is you put solder on both sides. Let's just take these ESC wires for example. They come with solder on the tips, but it's not that much solder at all. And it's not that great either. And even though there's some solder on this pad, if we try to solder this together, it's just, it's not gonna work, it's not enough. So I will take my SN63 soldering iron at 400 degrees Hold it on the pad for a few seconds and then add the solder. See how the solder is sticking to my soldering iron? That means that the pad itself is not hot enough. Once the pad gets hot enough, then see how it's moving from the tip to the pad? And there you go. Anytime you're soldering anything with pads, you do not want to hold the soldering iron on the pad for too long because the pad can come off of the PCB. And if that happens, then whatever that thing is, whether it's an ESC, flagging chore, or anything else, it's now trash. Because, I mean, you can watch my repair series of videos. I show you how to repair everything, but pads and traces on PCBs are two things that you cannot repair. So now that I have solder on this ESC, uh, let's just take this scrap piece of wire and try to solder it onto uh, that pad. And I'm giving this a lot of heat and holding it down for a very long time. And it's, it's taken forever and at this point I'm kind of worried about the pad getting too hot and lifting up. The wire is soldered on but it's not soldered on that great. And that's because you need to tin both sides. And that's when I just take the other side of my helping hand and I will tin this part as well. Now with solder on this, the two should go together a lot better. 
just like that and see how quickly they, it soldered together and that is a very strong hold another tool that I recommend is ceramic tweezers and I say ceramic tweezers because the tips are ceramic that means it can handle the high heat of a soldering iron but it doesn't conduct electricity like metal does there will be a lot of times throughout this build series where I use these because uh, sometimes when you're trying to get a wire soldered onto something it gets really really hot so I can just use these ceramic tweezers to hold it and it's not going to burn my hands if you ever need to remove solder because you put too much on something or it's touching the trace or pad of something else you don't want it touching then what I do I'll try to scrape off as much as I can with my soldering iron like that and then I use solder wick and this wick is going to wick up the solder and as you get more and more solder on the solder wick you'll have to keep moving down and cutting the tip off so that's about all the solder it can hold I'll just take my little clippers and clip the tip off with all the solder on it now I have a fresh piece and I'll just keep doing that that's about all the solder I can remove with the wick by itself and if you need to remove even more then you can use flux paste and I will just squirt some on the solder wick itself take the soldering iron kind of melt it into the wick and then we can go back to removing the solder and it comes off much much easier now And there we have it. It's as if we never had solder on that pad to begin with. And that's all the tips that I can think of for now. I'm sure you'll pick up on some of the stuff I'm doing throughout this video series. But uh, now we can move on to the next video where I install the ESCs onto the multi-rotors.